So let's have a look at putting a neon sign text in a few easy steps. We'll do it on the iPad in Affinity Designer. This way you don't need to worry about buying neon fonts. You can create your own neon signs in just about any font you like. Open your canvas and create a suitable artboard. Draw out a rectangle to cover it. Select the Artistic Text tool and drag out the letter A, always a good one to start with. Set the font to Arial Rounded MT Bold. I think you'll find this comes standard on most systems. Change the word to Neon, obviously for Neon Sign. Now we're going to set a little swatch and set the colour to 21 EAFF. That's in RGB hex sliders fairly easy to set and that just gives you a reference colour. Move the square to the top left and in fact I ended up moving it to the top right. <laughs> just to be different. Now let's colour the text to our preset blue. So click on the colour selector bottom left hand side there you'll see it just below the A. Click in the blue square and there's your neon sign in blue. Easy as that. Next we need to get the text ready for our modifications. So drag out a black rectangle over the canvas and make sure it's positioned behind the text. Obviously you don't want to blank the text out. Select the word neon and then convert it to curves. So you select the entire layer that's got neon written on it and then go to the command tool and select select convert to curves. Fairly straightforward. And you can see the group you've just created where each letter is now a separate curve. Now you need this so we can modify the letters. You can easily tell they're now curves too by the line running through the center of each letter. Let's begin with the letter N. Select the node tool that's second from the top there, you can see it selected, the, the arrow without a shaft. Then select the first letter N in the, in the um, layers and the stroke shows with the nodes displayed. And you can see on the curves there's a whole bunch of nodes displayed there. Now what we're going to do is modify these slightly. Tap the bottom most node and select break. That's the very bottom node on the end there and click the break icon in the context toolbar. That just changes that little node symbol slightly. It doesn't remove it or do anything flash to it, it just changes it slightly. Now tap the node one next to the node you tap break on. So the node next to it on the left hand side or the right hand side, it doesn't matter, and select delete. That's the trash can. And repeat until the bottom is removed. So on both sides, just click, break, uh, click, delete. Sorry, you don't need to break it again, it's already broken. Just click on the node you want and click delete, and it deletes that node. Now the two lines of the N will end up slightly higher than the base on the right hand side of the N. So the next bit is to collect those lower nodes left by selecting them with the correct tool. Drag a small box around the two ends to select them. So you select from the context toolbar, you can see right across on the right hand side, there's a little icon that's kind of a square with an eye in the middle and I've got a blue circle around it there. Select that one, then drag out a little frame around the two bottom nodes there and carefully drag them down so that those two lines are the right length for the end. Line up along the bottom. If you're lucky you'll see the um, snap lines line up across there to show you when you're actually at the right length. Be careful not to tilt it sideways otherwise you'll alter them. Just undo what you've done and do it again if you mess up. It's fairly straightforward. Repeat the same process with the other letters and you can see the letters I've got there. I've got E and the O and the N. So N E O N They've all got little breaks in them. Work away at that until you've got the job done. 
Now remember to make the ends round with the right tool. You can see I've got the ends of the lines there and I've got the cap tool is the rounded end. Just set that when you're doing it. If you haven't set it, just go back, um, select the entire ladder and make sure you select the cap as the rounded end. Now the end result of the lettering modifications. Now let's progress to the next phase. Putting in the power connectors and making the lights glow. Now obviously these neon signs have electrical connectors at the end of each um, sign letter. Think of those words now as neon tubes, just like you see in stores and, and um, supermarkets and things. Now start by collecting all the letters. You've got all the layers selected. Tap the group tool to form the letters into a group. This keeps them all neatly in one place. Now select the ellipse tool and form a small circle 50 by 50 just below the ends of the N. You can see it there. Color the circle grey with an 11 point stroke or 11 pixels slightly darker. These act as the power supply points for the neon tubes. You can see it's a grey centre with a slightly darker grey stroke. Fiddle with that till you get it right. It's not an exact science this. Move the power point into place. So at the end of the tube, that's where the tube connects to the power. If it were a real um, neon tube, obviously. Now ensure you remove the black fill from the letters. I inadvertently left the letters with the black fill in. I've got a black background, so I don't need the black fill in the letters. If you leave the fill in, you'll have trouble with putting the black circles in if you move them forward, move them backward, etc. to get them in the right place. Copy and repeat the power points for all the ends of the lines. And you can see I've gone across the letters there. Put the power points at the end of each line. Just like in real life. Now, go over there and group all power points because they will end up in layers and you can form them into a group. So you've got two groups, the letters and the power points. There we go, neon and power points. You can see the two groups there sitting on the artboard and the colour swatch at the top. All the groups so far, nice and neat. Now let's duplicate the neon group. We want to take the neon group and just completely duplicate it. You know how to do that. Command menu, select the group, command menu and duplicate. Select the new group layers and change the stroke color in the HSL sliders to the following 180, 66, 80. You can see it's slightly bluer um, or paler blue than the other one than the original one. Now this is where it comes down to how you want the neon sign to look. The paler blue, you can shrink your strokes so that it appears on the inside of the darker blue layer below it. Or you can select the stroke for the group and set the width to 7.4 and employ, apply a Gaussian blur to 72.3 and that really makes the lights glow. So you can see how easy it is. Once you've got those two layers, you can modify them to suit you. So adjust them to suit your own desires. Continue to adjust both layers until you're satisfied with the result. Now you can see I've got the, the uh, modifications to the colouring dimmed right down there. You might prefer to remove the Gaussian blur and replace it with an outer glow. Now there's the same thing and you can see there's white flashes or shall we say whiter areas in the center and an outer glow around the outside because I've got the top layers selected there and one layer in the bottom layer. You can really make some fine adjustments and get some nice looking um, lights happening there. You could even make each individual letter a different colour. Quite easy. 
The final result is really dependent on what the text is. But this method allows you a great deal of flexibility as you aren't reliant on neon fonts. You can design them yourself and make them however you like. And now you have a new design option to add to your toolkit. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, I really appreciate it.